Adam Bant, you say no new coal mines or gas wells. You've picked on Scarborough, Woodside's project. This project has been approved, ticked all the major regulatory boxes. So what do you want to see happen to current approvals be unwound? Well, our view is that uh, projects that haven't yet commenced operation and production should not do so. I mean, when the International Energy Agency made its very clear statement about uh, the need to stop new coal, oil and gas projects in order to reach net zero goals and to stay below one and a half degrees, of course, those approvals hadn't been obtained. Um, the, uh, the, what counts is how much pollution gets put into the atmosphere. Uh, sorry, what would be the mechanism to go back and unwind what has been approved? Look, we're in a climate emergency and we know that the single biggest thing that, or the biggest causes of the climate crisis are coal and gas. And we know that um, opening up new gas projects now is thoroughly irresponsible. Methane is uh, up to 86 times more toxic as a climate gas but than what, CO2. What would be the mechanism to unwind what has already been approved? Would it be down to the new environment minister to unwind that approval? Well, that's something we'd want to have a, a discussion with the uh, the new government about. We think there are, the, the government has got significant powers, both with respect to environmental approvals, but also with respect to export permits uh, in a way that, uh, that would enable uh, a government immediately to say, uh, we're going to put a pause on these new projects that haven't yet, yet commenced operation. If laws need to be changed in order to give them further mechanisms, then we can look at that. We don't think that's the case, but uh, if that's their view, then we can look at that. But the key question, uh, the prior question, is, is the government prepared to look at it? If they're not, uh, then that will be an obstacle in terms, of, in terms of a relationship of working with us in the next parliament. Are you prepared to pay compensation to companies like Woodside and their investors, or say Whitehaven Coal and their investors, if their expansions or their new projects which have been approved are then scrapped by the government? The gas industry are the biggest tax dodgers in this country. Like, why are they looking for compensation when they haven't even paid any tax in the first place? Like, 20... Do you accept these companies and their investors would have a compensation claim against the government? These big gas corporations have been taking this country for a ride for far too long and it stops now. 27 big gas corporations bought in $77 billion of income in one year and paid no tax. Like, and the, some of these gas projects that we're talking about off the coast of Western Australia, they don't even pay royalties but for do the you gas. Not, do you so not, they're getting the gas. Do you not accept that these companies will have a compensation well, claim? Well, that's something that I, I don't think they, they would be entitled to that. And we're talking about projects that haven't yet commenced operations. So, and, and, and I think it's important to be clear about this. We're saying we can have a discussion in the next parliament about projects that are already underway. Because that may well raise some of those issues that you've raised. Um, it may not, um, but we can, have a, we can have a discussion about that in the next parliament, about how we get out of existing um, coal, oil and gas in a way that supports the communities in the affected industries, and we can have a discussion about all of that. What we're talking about is not opening up new ones. You want Australia to switch to 100% renewable energy by 2030. Now, that will require huge investment and upgrade to infrastructure to achieve. Do you accept, at least initially, that will push up energy prices for households? Uh, no, uh, I think the opposite. I think what we're seeing from the latest report from the uh, energy regulator, for example, that the government hit during the course of the election campaign is that it's our ageing coal-fired power station that uh, fleet that is routinely falling over um, that is pushing up energy prices. There's big instability on the generation side in the system at the moment. We know, we know that the old coal-fired power stations are expensive, but so is the amount of money required to bring the grid up to scratch for the amount of renewables required. Do you accept this will only push up prices? Well, it, uh, there will need to be investment, and I think everyone accepts that, and the grid operator is saying that as well. And I, but I think it's a real opportunity. I, we, we could have a snowy 3.0 uh, with big investment in building the, the uh, 25 gigawatts, the effective replacement of the, of the, exist of the country's existing coal-fired power fleet in renewables over that time frame that you've talked about, um, would be a massive nation-building project. Do you have a plan to offset higher prices in the short term for households and businesses? 
Well, there's two things that would help uh, bring down the cost of electricity. One is a very clear plan to decarbonise electricity. But the second thing that could be done, and could be done immediately, is make it cheaper for people, households, businesses, to get batteries into their, uh, to attach to their solar PVs. We, we want to see batteries go the way that solar panels did, um, where through government support you create a market, um, you make it more affordable for people, you, uh, you increase the scale to the point where it becomes affordable for the average household. I think there's a lot that could be done to insulate households and businesses against the rising cost, not only of electricity, but of gas as well. And that would start with incentives to get more storage into homes and into businesses. On net zero, the Greens want net zero or net negative emissions by 2035. Labor has said that it will stick with the 43% reduction by 2030 and will proceed without legislation if it needs to. Are you going to respect that? Look, this, this kind of hairy-chested approach from Labor of saying it's my way or the highway and you can accept our legislation um, or, uh, or not and we're not up for amendment has just been roundly rejected by the people. Like the people at this election have sent a very clear message. Like the, the Labor and Liberal vote went backwards. The, the major party vote is at an all-time low and there is a strong desire now from the public for politicians to take climate seriously. Adam Vant, thanks for your time. Thank you.